Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. I hope that uh, these devotionals have been an encouragement to you uh, as you get through midweek and you need that uh, boost in the middle of the week to be able to hear a word from the Lord uh, that'll help you uh, in your walk. You know, during these times of trying to prepare what the Lord would have for me to bring tonight, I, I think this Wednesday night seemed to be the most difficult to find out what the Lord wanted uh, brought to you. And um, But after a long uh, while, I, I believe the Lord gave me the word that he wanted me to have to, just at the right time, like he always does. And You know, we're in a time where there's so much going on that's bringing so much difficulty in people's lives. We we got the virus, we got those people affected by it, we got the lives that are lost, we've got people that are having to work over and, and be in situations that um, are dangerous. We've got uh, our economy, we've got uh, people who've lost their jobs, going through various difficulties that way. We've got the, the tension in our society when riots and and the protest, and there's just so much going on. Uh, we just look around and wonder where the peace is that uh, the Bible talks about that passes all understanding because a lot of people are going through a lot of things. And, and you as well, I'm sure in your own personal life, beside all that I mentioned, uh, things that are going on with you. And, uh, you know, we begin to look and, and see what the Bible has to say. You know, I guess if you had a wish list, you, you'd say something like, I'd like to have just perfect peace. You know, wouldn't we all like to have perfect peace? Well, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about just that. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. And this is the verse, just in case you don't have your Bibles, or uh, I've got it here on the, I guess I could say on the screen. And it says this. It says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Perfect peace. That's what's guaranteed and promised to us in this scripture. And we're going to be looking at this passage to find out about that perfect peace. Let me read it to you in the Amplified. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace whose mind, both in inclination and its character, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. You know, isn't that what everybody is seeking? They're seeking world peace, society's peace. Do you know what I believe most people are seeking is that inner peace? And that's what I believe this passage has to do with, is that peace that we get from the Lord as we go through that. I don't know if you picked it up, but there was two things that were necessary for us to do to have that perfect peace that was promised in that verse. And so those are the two things we're going to focus in on our devotional today so that we know what, what is it that I need to do to have that kind of peace. I, I don't know about you, I'm, I was excited when I saw that. It's like, man... Whatever those two things are, I, I want to do because I want to have that kind of peace. You know, the first one is to keep is to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. To keep your mind stayed on the Lord because that's what it says there that we have to do. It's our mind. It's our thoughts. It's the things that, that we focus in on. You know, if you think about a lot of the love songs that they're out, you know, they, they have things like, I can't get my mind off you, or you're always on my mind. You know, that's a love song phrase that uh, people in love want to hear from each other, that, you know, you've been on my mind. What they're saying is, you know, you've stayed on my mind. Even when I'm not with you physically, uh, you're on my mind. And that's what it's saying here, that we have the Lord stayed on our mind during the times that we're we're walking about you know we ought to be able to tell the lord lord you're you're always on my mind you're constantly i, I want to be stayed on you you know because what does our mind tend to think of and tend to stay on 
Well, if yours does what mine wants to do, my temptation is for my mind to be stayed on the problem, the difficulty, the crisis, the heartache, the disappointment. You know, sometimes it's even, it's stayed on me and not the Lord. That's our temptation. You know, I think a person once said that, you know, if a person only thinks of themselves, then they don't, they're not thinking enough because we need to think enough to where we're thinking on somebody other than ourselves. Because if our focus becomes on us, we're probably not going to have for sure that perfect peace that the scripture talks about because it gives the criteria. The focus has to be on the Lord and how important our thinking is. You know, Proverbs 23 says, for as he thinks within himself, so is he. Wow. The way you think determines who you are. Now that's uh, because that's, that's the, the crux of, of our thinking process because, you know, we make bad decisions based on our, based on our bad thinking. And so it's important that our thoughts, our, our mind, our reasoning is all focused and stayed on the Lord. But it's easy to get off track because if it was easy just to keep our mind stayed on the Lord, um, we'd all have that perfect peace. But Satan's going to come after us in every way he can to keep us from having that perfect peace. So he gets us sidetracked. He gets our mind in another direction other than stayed on the Lord. Listen to Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, our minds get off track because it gets our minds get conformed to the world and the world's thoughts and the world's way of doing things. You see, that's what it said, don't be conformed to the world. That doesn't mean the global universe. It means the type of thinking. You know, you've heard the world of finances or the world of sports. That, that's that's a, a mentality, a, a way of thinking, the way the world thinks, a philosophy, a way of reasoning, a way of coming up with conclusions that are most of the time contrary to what God's Word says. It's a different perspective on how you think. And so that's where we get moved off of our minds being stayed on the Lord and our minds become conformed to the Lord. That, that word conform means schemes or, or patterns. We start pattering ourselves, conforming ourselves with the way the world's thinking and what the world's thinking instead of what God's thinking. You know, it's like a pattern or a form. You know, I got these cookie cutters from Re Rebecca from the kitchen. And, you know, you take dough, you know, roll it out, and you take these cutters, and when you press this down, the dough conforms to this image. And whatever this image is, the dough forms itself inside, and then when you take it off, then this cookie's going to be shaped like a heart, and this cookie's going to be shaped with whatever that shape is. And so that's what will come out and be conformed. We have to watch out because when we think on the world's way the world thinks, we'll get conformed and our mind will be conformed and we won't be stayed upon the Lord in our minds. You know, we've got to be careful of that because it's so easy. I was just reading a couple of statistics in an article that just said, you know, a college-age student will already have seen 200,000 hours of TV commercials. Those commercials wanting to be conformed to that way of thinking. By age 21, uh, a person has seen 10,000 hours of violence. You know, those are conformities. That's the way the world would want us to think about how it thinks. Also, it said 77% of all references to sex on TV is outside marriage. Conformity. That's what the world wants us to do, to be conformed to the way it thinks, and that'll keep us from being conformed to Christ. We, we kind of want to follow the way the world's thinking. I, I saw a deal where a, a candid camera uh, had a sitcom little thing where they had some people in an elevator already staged to be looking in the opposite direction when the door opened. 
And when the people came in, they saw the people looking the wrong direction away from the door. And almost everybody, when they came in the elevator, they looked the wrong way too, away from the door. Why? Because that's how everybody else was when they came in the elevator. That's how easy it is to be conformed to the world's thinking. And so we've got to be thinking different. We need to be thinking a different way. You know, our minds need to be focused on the Lord and see things from the Lord's perspective and not ours. Because the way we think determines how we act. We can go down a, a trail in our mind. You know, you ever seen cow trails in a pasture? That's because cows just constantly, one of them started going that direction and all of them started going that direction. And then cows will go down that trail because that's the trail that's always been trotted. That's the way it is with our minds as well. We tend to go down the same trail of worry and fret and doubt and all of those things instead of having what this verse says, to have our minds stayed upon the Lord. You know, even that rest of that verse said, don't be conformed in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, but be transformed. Uh, that Greek word is where we get the word metamorphosis, to be completely changed in our thinking and our mind. Not conformed, but transformed. That's the mind that we can have when we're stayed on Christ and be able to experience the peace of Christ. You know, the second thing that it says that we've got to do to get that perfect peace is to keep trusting the Lord. We've got to keep trusting the Lord. You know, it's, you know, we may start trusting, but then we start doubting, you know, because in difficulties, it is sometimes hard to keep our minds stayed on the Lord and not on the difficulty, and also to keep trusting the Lord. Uh, it also says in Proverbs 3, 5, which shows the correlation between trusting and our minds, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You see where the mind and the trust, even in that verse, go hand in hand. We have to have both, our mind focused, but then also the trust factor. You know, sometimes we're in situations where all we can do is trust, but we've got to do it. When you step on a plane and you get in your seat and the plane takes off, there's absolutely nothing you could do to prevent uh, dying in that plane. You're just trusting that, hey, the pilot's train, uh, whoever serviced this plane knew what they were doing, and off you go, trusting in the pilot, trusting in the mechanic, trusting in the builder of the plane, a full trust in what you just did. When you have surgery and the doctor is going to put you out, you can do nothing but trust that he's got the training, education, experience, to be able to do what he needs to do to rectify your medical problem while you're out because there's nothing you can do except what? Trust. You trust in the plane. You trust in the doctor. Will you trust in the Lord? That means just fully surrendering what the Lord's doing or allowing to do in your life, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Say, Lord, I'm going to trust you to do what you need to do that you're going to get me through. You're going to help me through. You're going to provide. You may not know how, but we don't need to know how. Why? Because we're trusting. We don't need to know how the doctor's going to do it. We don't need to know how the pilot's going to do it. We're just going to trust in them. But if we can trust in them, how much more should we trust in God who's perfect? Because those two... It, examples, those people can be flawed. They can make mistakes, but God, he never makes a mistake. You know, isn't that part of the reasoning, I believe, behind 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the rest 10, 5, it says at the end of that verse, it says, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know, we've got to take those thoughts captive, those thoughts that keep us away from staying on the Lord with our mind, and those thoughts that keep us from not trusting. We've got to take them captive. They'll come in there and you can guarantee that the thoughts of having the mindset that your mind's not on the Lord and having the mindset that, man, I can't trust right now, those are all going to be real. But what do you do? You take that thought captive and replace it with the trusting thought, replace that with the mind that stayed on the Lord. 
And this last verse I wanted to read, Philippians 4, 6, also brings those things together. Be, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known to God. And the peace of God will surpass all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see there about the worry and fear, you see those two things came up, the peace of God, and also that that peace would guard your heart and your mind. You see those two things go together, the trusting, the praying, the believing, the staying our mind on the Lord and on the Lord's work and on the Lord's will. So when these thoughts come with difficulties that we experience and we are experiencing, what are we going to be thinking on? What are we going to be focused on? The problem, the situation, the difficulty, our own self? No. Lord, we're going to keep our mind on you. One, because that's what the scripture tells us to do. And second of all, because we love him, we're going to keep our mind on him. And two, we're going to trust him to be able to have that peace. So that brings us back to our original verse that says this. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I hope you, like I will, take that verse and hold it dear to our hearts that when we time these things come, say, hey, I'm going to focus on those two, two things that I know I need to do to get that perfect peace from God. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've given us this opportunity, Lord, to have the perfect peace that comes from you. Father, I pray for each person, Lord, that is going through things in their life, whether financial, physical, emotional, job-related, career, health, Lord, whatever the case is, Lord, that you would allow them, Lord, to take these truths and be able to have that perfect peace that's promised to us in this verse. Father, we thank you for providing it. We thank you for giving us the opportunity by dying on the cross for our sins that we can have that relationship with you to make it all possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you were encouraged by that word and will take it in the days ahead to, to be able to walk in victory through the Lord's help, through that promise uh, in his word. Uh, just one word as we're mentioning about the things that are going on in our society. We've got a, actually a, a prayer rally uh, for national unity and healing. We're going to have that uh, in front of the Magnolia High School Auditorium. Uh, the area Magnolia churches have all got together. We just had a Zoom meeting uh, today and uh, to discuss uh, coming together as a community uh, the churches of Magnolia to coming together and being able to have a time of prayer. Now it'll be a, it'll be a rally, and you can pull up in your car in the parking lot there and stay in your car, uh, or you can sit on the hood of your car or in the top of your car, or whatever you know, just whatever suits you. We're working on getting the electronics to where um, Magnolia's first is going to be setting up the. Uh, sound equipment and all of the churches will be participating and we'll have a time where you can either hear it uh, from the PA system and also working on a means of getting it maybe through the radio in your car either way. So uh, write that down. It's going to be this Friday night uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, in front in the parking lot of the Magnolia High School. Uh, so write that down. This Friday night at uh, 7 o'clock p.m at the Magnolia High School parking lot. We want to have a great turnout. Be a, uh, won't be prolonged, but we're going to have a time of prayer for our nation for this time of national unity and healing that our nation needs so much because uh, God's people, when they pray, it makes a difference. So join us together. Uh, anybody that wants to come can come and be a part of this and take part, and uh, it'll be a blessing to you as we all pray together for God's will to be done, for safety, for unity, for the health of our nation, for our nation to really come to Christ. God bless you. I love you, praying for you, and I hope you have a blessed day.
God bless.